You can use any parts in the hang pin to build as long as it is exactly these. Well, not, not quite. You have some flexibility there. In this video, we're going to talk about what parts you're going to need for all the individual hang pins of parts, what we use exactly, and what options you have for the individual components. Again, thank you to Trinamic for sponsoring this video series. All right, so let's start with the mechanics again. And let's start with the mover. Okay, so the only thing that the mover does is to keep the extruder in place and be as wide as possible to, to allow the lines to not touch the print and also to constrain rotational degrees of freedom. All right, so the mover is made out of very few parts actually. So it is these wooden beams that we have. We're using beech in this case. You have... This is Scandinavian pine tree. All right, so this is German beech. Uh, we should point that out probably. You can use any wood you want, basically. So we have 13 millimeter here. Uh, yours is built with 15. Yeah. But you have some other options for materials as well, right? Yeah, you have uh, carbon fiber tubes that are most often used in quadcopters. You can use aluminum tubes, anything with the right dimensions. Yeah, as long as it's relatively light and relatively rigid, I, I guess you could use pretty much anything. So your, your favorite is still the carbon, right? Yeah, Just, it, it, it looks the best. <laughs> it's the stiffest um, per gram. The other thing that, that this mover doesn't have is a part cooling fan. It is the frame, it is a few printed parts. Um, for the printed parts, we're using all PTG, but you've printed with, with PLA. And it, it works well as long as you print them um, uh, hot. As long as you don't make them very fragile. Yeah, so... My wife is calling. So that they won't break when you flex them. Yeah, so this one didn't break that. That is good because I already broke one of these. <laughs> um, so in, in general, PLA, fine for the mechanical parts. Yep. But I would definitely recommend anything that touches a stepper motor or touches anything that could get warm, use at least PTG. It's almost as easy to print as PLA and it's just a, a bit more temperature resistant. Yes, I, I feel like I should give a general warning here because we will be mounting motors in the ceiling and if they melt loose from the motor bracket, they will come falling down from the ceiling. That's not something we want to do. So. Yeah, use PTG or ABS, of course, if you want to do that. Yeah. Um, so the, the other parts on the mover are the hot end and the extruder. Right here, I have a Bontech extruder that they gave me. Thank you, Bontech. But you can use your favorite. And exactly what we're going to be using is an E3D Aero Titan with a Volcano block, obviously. And we're also going to try and use the copper nozzle in a 1.2 millimeter size definitely go for the bigger nozzles uh, you want to be able to push out as much plastic as possible and in our case i think the copper nozzle will maybe make uh, heat transfer a bit better we'll see I've, I've not tried it with the volcano yet but it's not gonna hurt so that's what we use but you can use pretty much any hot end extruder combination um, as long as it has a nema 17 mount what are some things you, you should be looking for in an extruder and hot end? Uh, you should be looking for low weight and you should be looking for high throughput, basically. Yeah. So anything that, that can melt a lot of plastic and anything that can push a lot of plastic. Yeah. So that's the beam materials that is your hot end and extruder covered. And the printed parts, obviously, those are all open source. Uh, you can download those from GitHub. The links are going to be on the hang printer website on Tom's 3D or on the blog or in GitHub um, or in the video description. Uh, I'm going to put them everywhere so you have the easiest time of finding one. So the next thing that we should probably be talking about is the anchors, which are going to be built from these plates right here from these plywood plates they are generally just idlers they they take the string from the ceiling unit route it down and back to the to the mover yeah exactly so for, for those you need a few specialty parts you need these uh, 623 vv bearings and yeah. you you can get those from a few different places and you can actually get two different versions of these but either one should work right yeah Again, all the links to all the stuff uh, that you need is going to be on uh, tomsfield.org slash hangprinter, uh, including these bearings, which I found them pretty hard to source at times. So these are the idlers for the string. Um, again, you're going to need some, uh, some printed parts for those. We printed all of these in PTG as well. Totally not necessary, but the Neon Yellow E3D Edge and the Basalt Gray, uh, a Printer Pro PTG, just 
I don't know. They, they kind of look really cool together. And the one other thing you're going to need for these anchors is something to weigh them down, right? Yeah. You want them to be as stationary as possible. We will be running in open loop uh, on the steppers. And as long as you're running in open loop, you can screw them down. Otherwise, if you're running a big beefy steppers or you run closed loop control or something, then you want them to be able to move uh, in case somebody trips in the lines so they don't hurt themselves. Oh, okay. And the last real part of this entire construction is the, the ceiling unit, but that's also where, where most of the stuff of this printer lives. Like we, we rush through this uh, process, but this is where, where the good stuff is. Let's start with the base. What, what do you need for the, for the plate? The plate, uh, um, you want a fairly light plate because you, you will need to lift it above your head when you mount it. But right. once it's mounted, you want it to be as stiff as possible. Yeah, so this, this thing, this is upside down right now. It will be the other way around on the ceiling. Yeah. Uh, so that's the base plate. You need something that, that can carry all that stuff. How large does it have to be roughly? Roughly 47 centimeters times 47 centimeters. 19 by 19 inches. <laughs> you will have a, an easier time if you go for slightly bigger. So that there's a lot of stuff mounted to this plate. How do you figure out where exactly to, to position everything? Because this, this looks like a, you know, it's very well planned out. It might look like it, but it's not true. <laughs> I threw this together uh, quite quickly. But there are three parts here that need to be accurately placed out. And those are the, the, white, the white ones. They are line rollers for the D lines. So those are the ones that, that just come straight down from the ceiling to the mover? Yeah, and the way I place them out is by uh, building the mover first and then uh, laying the mover on the ceiling plate and marking where the holes are. Yeah, basically just placing them out, rotating them so that the line can enter from the D-spool, wherever your D-spool is. Then the rest of the work is making sure so that lines don't cross each other or don't touch gears. And if you want to get a rough idea of, of what this thing should look like when it's finished, um, we are going to have pictures of your units and uh, the unit we're going to build up on the website. So you can have a reference of, of how stuff is laid out. Okay, so that is the base of the ceiling unit. Um, let's move on to electronics. And we are using the good old Arduino Plus ramps. In our case, we're using a black and yellow Arduino um, simply because that fits the color scheme and I liked how it looked. Um, and we're using a RAMS 1.5, which has like different transistors and no polyfuses. I hate the polyfuses. It's a slightly better version of the RAMS 1.4, but realistically it doesn't matter since the only things we're going to be driving with this um, that comes to power delivery is the hot end itself. We don't have a heated bed. We're not putting a ton of power into this, so it really doesn't matter which board you use and which quality board you use. Uh, the geometry for hand printer is actually implemented for the Dute Wi-Fi. Uh, the Dute Wi-Fi developer doesn't own a physical hand printer himself, so I don't <laughs> recommend it for people who don't love Dute Wi-Fi and want to develop it. And this, again, this is not official Marlin. This is a custom Marlin fork that we're going to be running on the Arduino. So some of the more modern features of Marlin, like linear advance, etc., are just not going to be there. No. But what is going to be there is support for the TMC2130 that I just recently showed you how to set up on a standard Marlin version. Standard drivers, Allegro's, TI's also work pretty well. That's the drivers. Let's move on to the power supply. We are using a Delta 7.5 amp 12 volt supply. This is the, the original one from the Atom 3D printer. This is 12 volt, but you could also use 24 or a 19 volt supply if you get the right uh, hot end for it and the right heater cartridge for it. I do understand that you have been running into some performance issues with a 12 volt supply and the extruder. Yes, because this extruder has a one to three gearing on it. You, you can only achieve a certain RPM with the standard step drivers. At, at some point, basically the driver runs out of voltage to supply the motor with. Yeah. Um, you can combat that by using a 24 volt supply. Again, that is fully supported. Um, or you can use different motors. The motors you are using were relatively high inductance. Yeah. Um, so if you have the choice, go for some that are a lower inductance, which are the standard rep rep motors, ones that are rated for 2.5 amps uh, or 2 amps. Those are the ones you want, not the ones that are just rated for, for 1 amp and have a really high inductance. 
Um, I'm going to link some on the project page, of course, uh, some that should work with this. We are using, actually, what is this one? This is the one from the uh, from Prusa, which Trinamics supplied us with, plus some of Trinamics' own drivers. These aren't perfect for what we're doing here, but these are the ones that work. And for the A, B, C, D axis, so for the motion axis, the motors themselves aren't that crucial, right? No, a yeah. um, uh, point to make is that you want beefy motors for A, B, and C, and D so that you can run them cool. Yeah, so you, you want a, a lot of, of holding torque. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you, you don't need those high speeds as you do with the extruder. Exactly. And again, for printed parts, this is the area where you have the highest plastic investment uh, in the entire printer. So these gears right here um, that hook up to the actual spools these took quite a while to print, um, but then again, I did print them quite solidly. This is, I think, 20% infill, three walls. You don't need them that solid. So these big gears, they have a, a nice herringbone profile on them. Uh, these are the motor pinions, basically. And I guess a, a nylon would be a good choice for these, just to make them really smoothly rolling. But again, PTG to PTG also works. Um, I guess you could grease these up. This is, this is fine. This is really crucial. And again, you, you can leave them with a... A relatively large gap so you don't have to print them super fine and super super accurately. Some other things you're going to need um, for these spools as you can already see on this one are a few standard skateboard bearings. These are standard 608 size um, and again a few of these 623 v-groove bearings um, because you do have quite a lot of these line rolls that are going to guide uh, the fishing line. And speaking of fishing line that's the core part of the hang printer kinematics. Uh, this line right here, and I can't reach the other one, and this is what's holding the mover up, this is what's transferring force to the actual mover platform, and we actually tried these two different ones, we have a really cheap um, Amazon special braided upgraded line, uh, neon fishing line, probably great for fishing, but as it turns out this thing is really elastic and soft, while the fire line that the Torben brought is like rock solid and that does make a difference. You do have to tension these lines quite tightly and if you have a line that is going to be elastic, your mover is also not going to be very rigidly attached to the rest of the room. It will bounce around like this if you have flexible lines. So the last few vitamins you're going to need are a few standard screws. These are M3, M8 sizes. The full bomb is on the website. Um, you're going to need a few jumper wires to hook up the TMC2130 if you want to use these. You will need some ribbon cable um, that connects the ceiling unit to the mover. It just hangs down basically. And that is pretty much it. It is a really simple build, at least when it comes to the parts count. Um, so far the mechanical construction looks doable looks achievable but we will see when we build this thing so come along for the ride we will build this printer we will get it done we, we will make it happen um tune in for the live stream we hope you're gonna see it printing as well so thank you for watching and i'll see you then